Uh, take a motion to close the executive session and to reopen the public meeting, please. Uh, Trustee uh, O'Donnell, second Trustee Rosillo, all in favor? Okay. Meeting will come to order. We'll start with a Pledge of Allegiance to the flag and a prayer by Trustee O'Donnell. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There have been a, a couple of events over the course of the past week that I think we need to, to think about and to express our uh, sincere condolences to Trustee Flynn at the, at the passing of his father and a wish that uh, all, for all the best for his family. Uh, we also had a, a village employee who, after an amazing 50 years, on the planning board has retired. Uh, so we also wish to give our thanks to Ed Plotkin for the many, many years that he has been involved with our village. And on a very positive note, this past Saturday is one of the signs that summer is coming, that spring is here. And that was the Little League Parade. So happy spring to everyone. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Trustee O'Donnell. Very, uh, very nice words there. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to the magical world of Village Hall. This is a regular meeting of the Board of Trustees for Tuesday, April 14, uh, 2015. Um, we're going to uh, start basically right with courtesy of the floor. We do have two public hearings tonight which we'll get to after courtesy of the floor. One is on uh, discussion and consideration to amend section 28 of the village code regarding on-street parking. Uh, we did receive some correspondence on that from some concerned uh, neighbors, and we will take those comments tonight, um, as well as some thoughts that the uh, Dobbs Ferry Police Department has and see where we go with that. Um, so if you're here to speak about uh, uh, that particular issue, um, that public hearing will be the time to do it. We'll also then, uh, open a public hearing on the tentative budget. Uh, this will be the first opportunity really for us and for the residents to see the initial tentative uh, village budget for new fiscal uh, year 2015-2016, uh, which will be presented by uh, village administrator Marcus Serrano, who he does a great job with these presentations and a lot of work has gone into the tentative budget. Uh, it involves uh, the Treasury Department, uh, all of the heads of the departments, village staff, uh, the um, um, Citizens Ad Hoc Budget Committee is very much involved, uh, work that basically goes on all during the year, uh, and of course the village trustees are, are very much involved as well, and uh, we're into the final weeks now. It has to be adopted at the end of this month, so uh, we will... Um, listen to the presentation tonight, uh, the good and the bad, and uh, we will also be having a public workshop uh, this Thursday, the 16th, here at Village Hall, uh, as a follow-up, uh, meeting with the department heads and the trustees will be involved with that, and uh, we will, as we have always in the past, fully communicate uh, all aspects of the village budget and what we ultimately adapt. Um, and then we will get to uh, matters requiring action. So. Uh, Courtesy of the floor, is there anybody here who would like to address the board on any issue uh, that's on the agenda or anything that's not? Any ideas, any concerns, any issues you have? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, yes, if we recognize you, come to the mic here and state your name and address. So that is for the record and speak uh, into the microphone. Does it lower? It does lower, yeah. You can, <laughs> if you push that right there, yeah. There you go. Ah, good. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, thank you. Good evening. I'm Karen Cohen, and uh, we live at 63 Chestnut Street here in Dobbs. And I'm here to uh, request permission to have um, a, an arcade truck down at a party that we plan to have at Hudson Social down by the waterfront for my son Alex there in June on a weekend afternoon. Um, and I know that this is something new that hasn't been done before. I have a picture of the truck, if anybody is interested in seeing it. It will hold about 20 kids, and they have video games inside. 
Um, and I went by Hudson Social and looked, and it seems to me, in my opinion, that there's plenty of space adjacent to the restaurant that wouldn't block traffic. Kids wouldn't have to cross the street. They could come in and out of the restaurant, and it would be for two hours only on a Saturday afternoon. And I just wanted to ask if we could get permission to do that because I didn't want to just say, yeah, let's do it, and then show up and find out that it's a problem. So I don't know what else I need to ask or Well, say. you came to the right place. <laughs> um, that sounds like a heck of a good party. I hope so. Um, um, Karen, we have a couple of issues with that. Number okay. one is that happens to be the date of the high school graduation yes. day, which is as big a day in Dobbs Ferry as yes. there is every year. So that's number one. Number two, it is a municipal parking lot that is very, very busy, and there are liability issues. Yes. Uh, it's village property. Uh, thirdly, we're not in the business of granting approvals on village property for parties. And once okay. we start doing that, um, as much fun as this sounds like, and I hate to spoil the party, um, we would just get ourselves in a position where we would constantly be having to decide people you know, requesting who we're it and what not to do. Okay. I think it's fantastic that you want to use a local uh, business, Hudson mm -hmm. Social, and have your party there. And we don't have any issue with that, obviously. I mean, and there's parking available down there for however many people you might might need. But it, it's really not something that we can entertain. Uh, we're just not in the business of it. Um, you could, you know, the park, uh, as you know, the work that's been going on there isn't even opened yet. Uh, right. We are rededicating it uh, just actually the weekend before on June right. 13th. But uh, we're going to be announcing also, and I did in a newsletter recently, and we've been discussing this, that the park really isn't going to be fully open for right. another I year. Right, I understand. Now, normally what you would be able to do is be able to go and make an application to have a party in the park. Okay. Um, and that, unfortunately, isn't an option for you this year either. Uh, and we're, there's just nothing we can do about that. Okay. But it would so, be in the park and not in but, the parking but, lot. Got it. So we got do it. allow activities down there, and we encourage people to go to the waterfront, mm -hmm. and it's great you want to be there. But, but we can't do having that. a uh, a party where you're going to have something actually in the parking lot, it's mm -hmm. just way too much of a liability. And, you know, mm. it sounds like a lot of fun, and the, but kids running around, and it's Even just if not it's something on the, that... on the side? Yeah, no, we can't. We just can't entertain it. Mm. Um I mean, we'll talk, I mean, I, I just, do listen, you want me to show I'm you? not going to speak for the whole board, but that's do my, you want me to show my you thought, but if anybody else has any other opinions, um, it, it's I, just basically I, a trailer. God forbid, kid runs out. I mean, it's just, it's, it, it's a liability. It's a huge liability. Anybody could get hurt. You know, it's, you're not in the restaurant, so it's not covered under the restaurant. True. Right. It's, Wouldn't they have their own insurance, though? But it would, if it would happen, no, because it's on village property. So something there's, there's still the liability of the parking lot, which is so. Where if this I had them in parked. my in my garage in my parking, in my well, that's on your property. But that's, that's okay. Fine. Right. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, that's right. fine. Okay. So We're we can't sorry. we can't do it. What we recommend? Okay. Well, not the arcades where we can't approve that. Right. No, but the, having a party. Okay. Great. Have a party in uh, Hudson Social. Is that's the uh, the pizza truck okay? That's like that's a little, no, that's the same issue. Uh, that's has really? the same issue. Even in though, fact, the lease agreement that we have with the with the uh, business owner at Hudson Social, and they're okay. well aware of this, does not allow oh. uh, that other type of food to be serviced in that manner outside of their on their property. So see, we the had made the um, the deal with the the donation truck. pizza truck before talking to Hudson Social, so they had said they would make an exception, but if it's not up to them, it's not up to them. But they had said they were okay with it because that's going to change the whole, right. the whole thing. So if we can't do that there, then we can't do the party there. So that's what Sorry. you're saying? Sorry. Okay. Well, that's your decision. Yeah. yeah, all right. Thank you. Okay, thanks, I appreciate guys. your time. Thanks. Anybody else care to address the board? Okay. Um, <laughs> you can um, lift that up if you want to. Push the button and lift. That a little further down, Mike. I have a question about the budget. Um, what I didn't see in there was a lot of maintenance items. I'm just wondering, is that built in for um, normal maintenance of facilities, parks, buildings? Um, you know, the budget is very heavy on the, on the personnel, and I don't see those line items in there. Is that included, or is that something that's 
deferred. Yeah, maintenance, the maintenance of buildings, the maintenance of parks are included, and they do have their various lines. Sometimes they're, you're right, they're not always easy to find, but maybe you could address that, Marcus. If you, I mean, specifically, whether it comes to parks and facilities, yeah. but each department, uh, police, uh, parks and rec, DPW, all have facilities that need right. to be maintained. Within those budgets, there are lines to maintain, um, to maintain infrastructure, to maintain facilities. And it includes the uh, the waterfront park. Actually, there's there's some lines there, some discussions we're having about that. But maybe sure, you can no give problem. Mike yeah, a little bit more detail. I mean, any department that has a building like parks. There's a park maintenance line, and that park maintenance line also includes buildings. There's a building maintenance line. There's a mechanics maintenance line. So there are lines for general maintenance of buildings as well as general maintenance for equipment. And the department heads can actually elaborate more. If you want to come to the workshop, we're having on Thursday and they can identify more details in that, but they are maintenance for buildings as well as equipment. Okay, so for like the community center or the pool, um, you know, not just talking about the daily maintenance, but you know, eventually things have to be replaced or there's larger maintenance items that um, seem to get covered outside of the normal budget. Um, and it's not very sustainable if we're planning on um, you know, essentially generating fees from capital items to pay for the maintenance. That's you my know, concern my, for sustainability. We do. Uh, we have a, a recreation fund. New developers pay $10,000 per I'm unit. I'm very well aware of that. Yes. Yeah, so that, that money comes out of, out of that fund for some of the things you were talking about. Right. And obviously the code says that the, the idea of that maintenance, that recreation fund, it, the Recreation Trust Fund is, you know, the primary description of, of it is to cover the additional recreational facilities that would be associated with the new people that are being generated by the development, right? Obviously, if you don't have new facilities, then you have a lot more people with a lot less facilities and still no maintenance budget, which, you know, I don't envision as being sustainable, right? It also generates some uh, odd incentives in, you know, sub covering shortfalls, um, you know, and that's obviously not something that people are expecting to have to worry about 10 years down the road here. Uh, personally, I expect to still be here uh, and hope that, you know, the village is sustained so that we have the same sort of facilities for the same people um, and that you know, the property value yeah, is they might. down we're, we're, we're all in the, the same boat with you. We feel the same way. Right. There are maintenance budgets. There's a long-term capital plan, which is given in great detail within the, the, the budget. And um, we'll, we'll go over the capital plan, the long-term capital plan, which is also about sustainability and is about uh, maintenance and equipment that needs to be replaced, um, you know, whether it's after five years or ten years. And that's a constant exercise and part of the process. So. Um, and yeah, it's difficult. We have very little to work with, but a lot to maintain, a lot to sustain, so. Right, um, and obviously there's a state cap of some sort um, that limits what you can put in there. Um, well, it doesn't know, necessarily limit you. I mean, you can, you, you gotta run the business, you gotta run your village the way you have to run it. Um, it's set as a target, it's set as a guide, but um, you know, municipalities will go over the tax gap, and that's getting actually more challenging. I know Marcus will talk about that tonight as well. Um, as the tax cap level actually is going down, they're readjusting it to inflation. So where you had a little bit of room before, you have even less room now, but costs and, and insurance costs are going up and up, and you mentioned personnel costs I, as well. I, so, understand the, um, I understand the squeeze. We'll get you on the budget committee, and you can really be part <laughs> of this process. Then, uh, um, so we appreciate your concern, and I think Marcus can answer a lot of your questions, and certainly at the workshop, and we'll make this all available. And um, I know mm -hmm. the newsletter every year has put a lot of detail about the budget, so and we're happy to talk about any aspect of it. So right, there's I read nothing through, to hide. I, I read through the the budget as it's as it's presented. That's that's why I asked the questions because the line items weren't exactly there. And you know, for example, if I looked at you know what it costs to maintain the the, the cemetery, even if you spread that out over a number of years, that would still be a significant maintenance item, right? Um, so, you know, it would seem that those aren't things that you can hide in an ongoing maintenance budget without, you know, them being visible. 
what I didn't see was that same visibility as there is in the in the recreation trust fund expenditures, okay. right? Because those are then become big lump sum payments instead of you know spread out over the years when they're actually you know being maintained. So you said Thursday is the a workshop on Thursday night. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The budget yeah. workshop right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. Anybody else care to address the board? Great, thanks for your comments. Okay, um, we're going to do you first or second? We're going to do the okay. Well, let's uh, let's do it in order the way we have it. Yeah. Um, so, moving into the public hearings, I'll take a motion to open the public hearing to consider amending section 28 of the village code. This is regarding on-street parking. Is there a motion? Trustee K. Second, Trustee Golio. All in favor? And that is seven eyes, right? Uh, public hearing is open. Okay, uh, just as way of a little bit of background here, um, I guess this is really uh, focused very much on the Florence Avenue enclave. Uh, there's been some new new develop there, new buildings, and I guess it's they've sort of officially been recognized. And now we're the the the, the, uh, um, the uh, chief of police has recommended that uh, there be some parking restrictions in that area now. Um, so uh, this was noticed and specifically uh, presently the code for Florence Avenue uh, it reads and this is in village ordinance 290-28 uh, on street parking there shall be no parking on the northerly side of Florence Avenue from Scott Street to Bellevue Avenue what's being considered um, is adding under Florence Avenue a there shall be no parking on the northerly side of Florence Avenue and B there shall be no parking on the west side of the dead end of Florence Avenue from a point opposite number 75 Florence Avenue to a point up and including the southernmost cul-de-sac so that was the uh, initial proposal we did receive uh, some input from some residents that live on Florence Avenue and um, and they had some other ideas and they had some concerns and and that's why we hold these public hearings hearings is before we make any decisions we get the input from everybody the, the police where it's appropriate fire uh, staff review boards and residents so um, I do believe that uh, um, we did we did look at those the correspondence that came in art I think you're, you'll be here to talk about it and I think that the, the the chief has responded and that there could be there might be some compromise here that that would work for everybody so um, so I think we know where we want to go with this but is there anybody here any residents that would like to address the board on this? Yes, Art. And again, just state your name and your address uh, for the record, please. Art Manukian, 42 Florence Avenue. Hey, I appreciate that you got my email with the photographs and all that. And just trying to demonstrate with those pictures that it's conceivable to uh, put six cars on that northern end, edge. Uh, and it looks like there's plenty of room for vehicles, uh, including large vehicles like fire trucks or whatever, to get in and out of the uh, enclave area. Um, and also, at the south, uh, what is it, the southwestern um, corner, so to speak, there was cut out uh, about 60 feet, uh, sort of indented westerly about three or four feet, uh, which appeared to be uh, for parking, nose-in parking, which could have handled about seven cars. But I understand from talking with Mr. Cook that uh, DPW was going to be using that area to be able to make a U-turn to come back up. So we're suggesting that on the days, Fridays, uh, in the evenings and Friday, uh, Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays, uh, that maybe to use, be able to use that parallel park there, uh, probably three cars, possibly four. And still, by parallel parking, uh, you're not taking up as much space as you might have otherwise taken up. Um, and the other thing I'd like to point out, it's not just a, an issue as, as the other resident had, had focused on uh, to have visitor parking. Uh, those six cars, there was a party there Saturday uh, for a youngster. And, you know, the moms brought a lot of kids, and those six cars were probably most of the cars, but not all of the cars, 
uh, there. If they lost all that, uh, of course, we're likely to get the spillover further up on Florence, and we've got enough problems there. Uh, the two new houses that are coming up at 60 Florence, they're going to have two driveways, so there'll be two cutouts there. Uh, there's not going to be a lot of space um, for others to park. And if you know that area, uh, Scott Street, Irvington, Bellevue are pretty much crowded. Um, it's hard to walk up and down those places if you could find a parking space. So it gets pretty <laughs> sticky over there. We don't have a lot of room. Um, and then there's, uh, there's another issue. If we take it a little further than just the, uh, the visitor issue, uh, one of the indicators people use, it's, it's just an indicator, it's not hard, is uh, bedrooms to determine uh, the population of an area. So uh, the enclave is, uh, my ad the advertisement I saw is four bedrooms for each unit, seven units, that's 28 bedrooms. The two new houses that'll go up on Florence, I believe those are also four bedrooms, so that's another eight. So we're talking 36 bedrooms in within 200 feet of each other, roughly. Um, and, you know, you're not going to see it all at once. People come in, family expands. I, I've lived up there for quite a while, and I've seen two generations, including my own kids, and we've gone from one car to four cars, and we're back down to two, and one of my neighbors is up to five, and, you know, and that's how it goes. So it's not just a short-term thing. It's a long-term thing. Whatever we're able to save in terms of uh, parking for that area would be just you know, really awesome. And also, you know, that party that they had there, they were able to uh, use the doghouse. Uh, you may be able to recognize it. I see the it. truck in the, in the picture. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, you know, if they, if they see that, you know, they can't have parking for their party and all that, probably go someplace else, a bowling alley or, a, you know, pizza shop or something like that. So anything we can carve out would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Art. Appreciate your comments. <coughs> Anybody else care to address the board on, on this issue? Betsy. Okay. Yeah, Betsy, Betsy um, yeah. and maybe this would be for the benefit of the board as well as to Art and the neighbors. Um, Betsy has come back, and Art, we did look at your, your, your note as well as the note from the other resident. And, um, and I think the chief had some thoughts here that might... but there were two delivery trucks. I waited 20 minutes, I couldn't pass by. They had to come out and move, and it was going into number 65. But you can see from those pictures, I was waiting to come down Florence. There was a delivery truck, there was a delivery truck beyond that truck, and then there was somebody trying to get out. So it's very narrow, it's very narrow. The pictures that you sent were great pictures, and it shows you can definitely put six cars there on a bright and sunny day. But when Gary and I were up there measuring, when it was, it was snow filled in that area. So we're going to have to be very careful if we allow parking there to make sure that there is no snow plowed to that area. Because once you move the cars away from the curb because of the snow, it's going to become very narrow. <coughs> so my suggestion at this point would be, I, I gave, I think I sent, sent everybody an email, would be to allow those six cars park, to be parked on the north side of Florence. I believe it's 400 feet east of Scott Street. Easy six cars can fit in there. But we'll have to watch it, and we'll have to see what the winter brings. And if it becomes too narrow, then we'll have to revisit this. And, and perhaps. Or, or snow removal. Right. And our code, right now in our code, there is no parking in a cul-de-sac. So, and it was my understanding, again, I was not part of this until the road was going to be dedicated to the village, um, but it was my understanding that the planning board, right. um, they had told the owners or the developers that there would be no parking on Florence Avenue opposite where the buildings are erected. Correct. And the hammerhead was for the fire, the fire apparatus as well, as well as garbage trucks to be able to go in and turn around. So it wasn't just the garbage trucks, it was also for the fire you know, at, the, at the far end, there is a fire hydrant, so there'd be no parking on either side of that fire hydrant. And then to back out of the parking space, uh, to back out of the driveways, you would actually, you'd be backing into cars, into cars that were parked. Exactly. 
along. So I've spoken to the fire department, I've spoken to DPW, I've spoken to the ambulance corps, and everybody feels that there should be no parking in that area. So it's up to you guys. Okay, so with that then, um, well, any comments from the board at all? I have a question. Uh, do, do most of the people have driveways and garages? They all have driveways. They all have driveways yes. and they all have garages? And garages. How, how large are they? Do you know one car, two one, car? One car, one car garage with a driveway. Yeah, I, I don't know. There's Just, one car garage with a driveway. Yeah, I, I don't. So I conceivably don't two cars can be parked. I don't know if you can yeah, see it from that picture. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just, I mean, I just saw so much parking on the street. I was just wondering if there was no alternatives. So on a, on a, on a you know, a yeah. day like today, you can absolutely put six, six cars there mm -hmm. on, that, on that north mm -hmm. curb. But uh, I, would, no. I would venture to say that snow has to go somewhere, and okay. you're not going to put it over the fire hydrant. So. But don't we have streets where you have to move your car to, for snow removal? Wouldn't, couldn't that be the same thing? You have, it's, it's narrow to begin with. No, no, no. I'm saying couldn't you have parking there but with signage that says, and it's... A, Again, we'll have to... Right now, right. We'll, we'll leave it the way it is. We'll have to see the first snowfall, how it goes. Okay. And if we feel, I mean, we can always restrict it immediately. I, you know, I have the authority under the code to, to put no parking signs up tomorrow, if, if need be. Um, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see okay. how it works. This is you. Yep. Okay, so we're saying we can leave it the way it is now? Yeah. No. This is the, your recommendation here. Yes, that's, that's so let's, 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 let's get that out. The six okay. cars on the so northern? What we're, right. what we're so it will contemplating be, is that we would... It there shall be no parking on the northerly side of Florence Avenue from Bellevue to Scott Street. Correct. B. There shall be no, B would be there shall be no parking on the northerly side of Florence Avenue from its intersection with Scott Street to a point 400 feet easterly there from. Correct. Which would essentially allow for the parking on the north side, which Art pointed out. You pointed out there was basically mm -hmm. six that could, that could accommodate those six. Mm -hmm. So that would be allowed. And that the police, fire, all the public safety departments and the DPW all agree that there can't be any parking in the cul-de-sac itself. Correct. So, there, so the C would be there shall be no parking from a point opposite number 75 Florence Avenue to a point up to and including the southernmost cul-de-sac. Correct. Yes. Um, the, uh, come to a mic. Come to a mic, Art. Um, what about on the eastern edge in front of the townhouses? There appears to be, um, I would say, about three, possibly four spaces in front of the, you know, between the driveways that would be on the easterly side. So and this is in your, your drawing here. You got three and four, three units, four units. Yeah. So in between. So in between the driveways. Yeah, there's a little bit of space. They would be able to park. And I believe, I believe it's three. I think you could get three cars in between the driveways. Yeah, you, you also had said on the drawing that you sent us that you uh, would suggest, you know, Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. to 7 a.m. for no, those spots. No, that, that wasn't says, you? No, that, that, was, yeah. that was you. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And after speaking with, again, you know, I spoke with, with the fire department. I spoke with, with Gary, DPW, and they all agreed that that, that just... It's not enough. They need to get in there. They need to be able to get a fire truck in there. They need right. to be able to turn okay. around. Right. They so need to get the garbage is, truck in there. Yeah, they absolutely. need an ambulance. Yeah, it's Gold just, plan. it's not feasible. It doesn't look like the hammerhead. I've got that. Thank you. It comes from Big T. Yeah, right there. I, I just got one thing to add with that. I went down and measured it. The road is about 20 feet wide, yeah. opposite the driveways. And we figure if you get snow in there in the wintertime, you're never going to be able to get those cars out of the driveways. Parking on the east side, I agree with you, you could park there. That would not be a problem as long as you keep the west side open. You do have a fire hydrant halfway up on the west side, and there's another fire hydrant in the cul-de-sac. The idea of the cul-de-sac is one of the unsafest operations is backing up. So we want to try to limit the amount of backing up there, especially in the winter if you're plowing. After this winter, I had four times I had to go down there and ask somebody to move the car going down to the dead end of Florence due to the fact that where it was parked, we could not get a nine foot plow through there. So then when I get all the way down into the cul-de-sac, you wanna be able to try to turn around in there if you can. Because like I said, one of the most unsafe operations is backing up and you do not wanna back up and around and out. It's just too long. 
That's just my thought on it. Okay. All right, any other comments? So, Art, it's kind of like a compromise, I suppose, but uh, are you okay with that? Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> okay. And safety requires that other area to be left open, and that's fine. Okay. Thank you for your comments, and your little map was very, very helpful, and uh, gave, us a, gave us a visual that was, uh, was good. Great. So, um, okay, great. So I think what I should do then, uh, close the public hearing, and then we'll take action on this, because um, I think it's in everybody's best interest. I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. Trustee Golio, second Trustee uh, Flynn, all in favor? And that passed with seven ayes. Um, moving this forward, um, let me try this then. I'll take a motion. This will be a motion to um, a motion for a proposed local law number 5-2015, local law amending chapter 290-28 on street parking restrictions of the village of Dobbs Ferry code. Uh, we've already said what the code currently reads. Um, the proposed changes will read as follows, um, and this will be for Florence, uh, Florence Avenue. A, there shall be no parking on the northerly side of Florence Avenue from Bellevue Avenue to Scott Street. B, there shall be no parking on the northerly side of Florence Avenue from its intersection with Scott St Street to a point 400 feet easterly therefrom. C, there shall be no parking from a point opposite number 75 Florence Avenue to a point up to and including the southernmost cul-de-sac. And uh, so that's the motion. Well, that's how the resolution. Sorry, that's how the resolution will read. Is there a motion? That's what I'm looking for. Trustee Golio, second. Trustee Cassell, discussion. All in favor? And that passed with seven eyes. And we want to thank the the, the chief and uh, head of our DPW for the village's input. And uh, Art, thank you very much for your uh, for your letters. They're really well presented. It was really helpful for the whole process. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Public hearing number two, uh, take a motion to open the public hearing on the tentative budget for 2015-16. Trustee O'Donnell, second Trustee Golio, all in favor. Okay, as we normally do this time of the year. By the way, where is Mike? He comes in here, all kinds of uh, opinions about this and that line and doesn't stay for the presentation. What's up with that? <laughs> all right. Um, Anyway, as we do this time of the year, um, it's always a, 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 a um, great that Marcus Serrano, village administrator, presents to the board and for the public to see the tentative uh, budget presentation for 2015-16. Again, I emphasize this is the tentative budget, but I would also emphasize that a lot of work has already gone into this budget um, with the administrator, the village treasurer, and, and, and Jeff Tudor, our new village uh, treasurer, very much involved, obviously, in this process, working with the department heads, working with all the staff, uh, communicating with the board, uh, all the members of the board, and, uh, and with a lot of help from the Citizens Ad Hoc Budget Committee, too, along the way. It's a process that goes throughout the year, and uh, it's worked very, very well, as evidenced by the fact that we have been able to keep tax rates very comparatively low to, uh, to the, compared to the region over the last uh, several years. Uh, we have been recognized by the New York State Comptroller's Office having really the lowest, one of the best scores of any municipality in the state of New York on the fiscal stress test recently. Um, and we have a very, very strong, I know we had a, a call with Moody's, one of the rating agencies this week that went very, very well and we maintain a, uh, the highest um, investment grade ratings that you can get. But none of this is easy. <laughs> And it's getting more and more difficult. We have less and less to work with, and, and the, 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 the challenges and the costs keep going up. So I think we have a challenging year this year, yes. which you're going to explain to us. And, uh, but we're, 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 we're looking to do what we can. And so this is uh, by no means the final pass, right. but it's a good first pass. And, and I know that in the past, Marcus has you know, looked where, where, you know, where you might have some, some room and uh, we probably don't have a lot of room in this one. Right. But uh, if we do, we'll, we'll try to find it. Absolutely. And we're, at the end of the day, going to communicate it very, very clearly. And so everybody knows um, the good and the bad and, and what we're trying to do to plan for a sustainable future. So 
this is the starting point. Anyway, Marcus Serrano, Village Administrator, with the presentation. Thank you so much, Mayor and Board. And um, I, first of all, I want to say that I'm very proud and honored to continue doing this. This is my sixth year presenting the budget to the Board. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with everybody, the department heads, the budget committee, the village board, and uh, I think together we've done a very good job trying to provide the services to the to our residents, but at the same time trying to keep the taxes as low as possible. And I think this will show some emphasis of what of we've accomplished and also some hurdles we might have to be crossing, crossing in the future. So if anybody has any questions with the presentation, please interrupt me. What I try to do is put more of a graphic behind the numbers and trying to and make people understand the trends we've been facing, what we've been doing. Um, my budget message also is on the website. Hopefully you can read that. I got more into details in regards to what we've been doing for the last couple of years and try to explain how we reach where we are right now. So with that, um, I'll start my presentation. Uh, the first thing I'd like to start off is a little summary of um, how we got to where we are. We talked a little bit about the tax cap and the tax freeze. Um, whoever doesn't know, now we have two mandates we have to follow. One is the tax cap, which is normally 2%, or CPI, whichever is lower, as well as now we have the tax freeze, which actually mandates a credit check that goes to the residents as long as you may meet other mandates, which is you got to stay below the tax cap, as well as you cannot adopt a resolution to override the tax cap, which we've done every year since the tax cap first came in place. Not because we're going to override the tax cap, but because we wanted to protect ourselves that if there's any mistake in the future that somebody finds out in the future, we don't want to then burden the taxpayers with creating the reserve and putting that money aside that has to be shown to the state that we took it off the taxes uh, and then raise taxes to make up for that. But to, in order to meet the tax freeze regulation, we cannot even uh, adopt or even consider that resolution. So this is the first year, as you will see, that we're not open a public hearing to even consider that this year. All right, so I just want to explain that to everybody. So um, what you see on the first line is just showing you what the uh, levy increase would be on this year. Um, just to explain some of the exemptions and the carryover, one of the items that you're allowed to ha have an exemption is whenever the retirement rates are higher than the tax cap for that year, you get a credit offer. That's one of the only exemptions under the state law. Um, the good news is for the last two years, we've had no exemption because the rates from the retirement has been lower than the tax cap. So therefore, there are no exemptions for retirement. Uh, the next item is a carryover. We had a $30,000 carryover carry from last year, which we used to offset any tax levy increase this year. And then, um, so it shows you it's a 2.1% 2, 2 increase. But another avenue that you're allowed to use, we also had a small, a carry, a small growth factor. So for example, the tax cap for this year was 1.068. There was also a growth factor that we were allowed, which was a 1.014% increase. So that all got combined. And, I, and the faces are, yes, it's a little complicated. It's not an actual percentage. It is a, a, um, it's an amount that the state allows you as a growth factor, which means is when they receive the tax information from us, even though we show a decrease in overall assessed value, we actually had a small growth. But due to tax search, we actually saw a decrease. But I, 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 if it wasn't for the tax search, we would have seen an increase in our taxable value. And we're allowed to get a growth factor for that also. Uh, in the bottom, I actually show you the actual facts of what the tax calculation is. So we're looking at a 2.91% increase for this fiscal year, showing you what the tax rate were from last year to this year. And we'll, we'll summarize that at the end. This shows us a little comparison to other municipalities, um, well, our sister villages. I'm proud to say that our tax rate comparison to other municipality is lower than the other ones. I think that shows you we try to friendly compete against each other and try, we always try to email each other what the tax rates are gonna be. That shows you that we've done a good job to try to keep it one of the lowest ones. Um, this is the tax levy over tax levy increase over the last couple of years from 2000 to this year, just showing the growing trend of the increase in the tax levy, but you'll see that's mainly due to the reduction in our accessible value, which you will see also. Again, just so your percentage, as you can see, for in 2009 we had a jump, but you can see every year from that point forward that our percentage increase has been pretty level for the last couple of years, pretty low, winning two or three percent. Again, just a percentage in the tax, the tax rate that we're saying, we're staying, you go back to 2009, we were above four, 
but every year thereafter, we were in the two range. And it's pretty, pretty consistent for the last couple of years on that. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, this just shows you what our, our tax rates in comparison to, our, to what the village, what, as a village resident, what you would pay as a lump sum. Because always here, I pay a lot of taxes. I try to break it up a little bit of what, where your tax money goes to. So at the bottom level right there, you, what you'll see down there is really the library level. Uh, at the bottom line, the next line is the um, is the uh, is the village, and then the county, and then you got the two school districts on top of it. We do have some residents that it, well in the RZ school district, so I like to show that also. This is this is a contra to the tax levy increase. This is the assessed value continue continuing to drop. Um, we were hoping to see a flattening out of scars, which we've had with the small claims, but the problem is we still have a number of tax search still pending due to apartment buildings, condominiums, our retail stores that still have multiple years of taxes that are due back to them, which we can't account for until we're hit by it. And then we're hit by it, you'll see a de decrease. So how do you make up for that? You have to raise taxes to make up that loss. So Marcus, just, this is the yes. total value of all real property, taxable, in Davis Ferry. That's right. So that's 51 something million. 51 dollars. million. 51 million. Yes. Okay. And as you can see, back in, in the early 2000s, we were up to almost 54 million. So right. we've had a substantial decrease in our taxable values. This, I don't want to get into all this detail, but I try to break up with the major, anything over 10,000 increases or decreases. It's on my budget metrics on page two. If anybody has specific questions, some of the department has, uh, I'm glad some of the departments are here if you want to get into that, but I thought we'd deal more with this more at the workshop so we get more into details at that point. Yeah, that's point. exactly what we'll, we'll okay. do. I mean, we'll take a few, we'll yeah. take some comments tonight, certainly, yes. if there are some, but I think uh, more appropriately at the workshop. Perfect. Um, which generally is for the residents to uh, to observe, Correct. Uh, and I think that's still good. Uh, but they can they can they can certainly observe exactly. And um, and, th and there will be other time for other uh, plenty of time for other input too. Mm -hmm. but. Yes. Okay. And now I try to hit the uh, major decreases. So I hit re revenues inc decreases. We'll get more to detail. But again, it's on page two on my budget message. Retirement rates. Um, we had a big jump over the last couple of years. As we discussed in the past, the retirement system always has a five-year lag. Uh, and due when the stock market crash happened, they predicted we're going to see five years of increases in retirement rates. The good news is that the stock market has stabilized. And we actually saw the last year, the first really stabilization, and we actually saw a decrease this year. Uh, mainly due also not only to rates stabilizing, but also near two new tier six taking into effect. Because this, this, this is for the entire state of New York where they do the rates. So by having a new tier six, where actually now you pay longer, you actually retire at an older age, it actually then spread announced the rates for everybody else throughout the state of New York. So that's, been, that's helped us a lot. People were retiring, people were coming back as tier six, and that affects police as well as, as all other employees. So we're heading in the right trend on, on the retirement bills. On the medical bills, uh, we've discussed this in the past. Um, you see that big spike in 2009. I always like to explain that. That's the year that we worked with the budget committee. Vic was in the budget committee. We were self-insured, almost self-insured, on the, the MEPCO, POMCO plan. And that's the year, two years, in fact, we were hit with substantial losses. And since we were self-insured, we had to pay dollar for dollar out of pocket. During that time, we worked with the unions, and we actually m moved over to the Empire plan, which is the New York State plan, which is a rate plan. Which is has also which has all the insurance required to cover those extraordinary circumstances. So now we have the rates stabilizing, and now you don't see that big jump like we saw in those years. And when you see the fund balance too, those are the years the fund balance got the biggest hit uh, due to that big loss that we had to pay for a couple of claims that we had. Uh, this shows you expenditures by group. I like to show this because you can see between salaries and benefits, like I was explained before, that's the biggest jump part of our budget due to what service, what service, what service organization. We provide a service to our residents. So providing the service, the labor cost is high. So this shows you how much is controllable of the budget overall versus what, what's almost not controllable. We've done a good job over the last couple of years. Uh, every single department is down to what it was six years ago. We lost over 30% of our labor force, and the department has are doing a lot with less. And everybody's doing the best they can, but we lo lowered our labor force substantially, 
And even with that, our labor, the labor cost is high and the benefits are high to come along with that. Uh, this is an explanation of uh, how the budget is broken up on the state of New York. General government support is more the administrative, administrative aspects of it. Public safety, police and fire, we understand. Building department is part of public safety. Transportation is more of a highway department. So this is more like that I like to show that you can compare that. If you want to compare it to other municipalities throughout the state of New York, this is how it's compared to. So you can do a comparison that way. Public safety, I like to, I like to break it up public safety, but public safety was the biggest part of the pie. Um, it's broken up between all these departments. I'd like to show this one more, more to show the building department, building and planning is considered a public safety aspect of it. A lot of people don't understand that because you do, they are protecting the public from fires and collapses or anything else, so that's a good aspect to show that. Uh, the biggest part of the pie is the police department. The police chief does a fantastic job. I'd like to show this because she has very, very little amount of her budget to cover. As you can see between salaries and benefits, it's like 94% of her budget is salary and benefits. And she controls the overtime, she controls the expenses. If you look over our budget year to year, she tries to stay flat. And to stay flat, it's very difficult when the salaries are still going up, benefits. So this is my kudos to the chief. She does a fantastic job. And you can tell by how much she actually has the amount to control, which is a very, very little amount of the overall budget for the police department. Uh, this is stuff, we're getting into revenues now. My concern with the revenues is we've had some increases in some revenue aspects, but not enough to cover the overall expenses and, dec and increases. Again, this is on page four of my budget message, and uh, we can discuss that more when we ha actually have a, a workshop. Um, I break up ma major revenues. Um, we're very, very dependent on some of these major revenues to keep the taxes down. So you can see our biggest aspect of the major is sales tax. So when the economy was doing bad and, it was cr and the sales tax was going down, that all, then we had to make it up. So imagine sales tax down, assessed value down. So what do you have to do? You have to raise taxes, especially when you consider that most of, your, most of the expenses are salary and benefits. This shows you a percentage of major revenue to overall expenses. If you can see, since 2011, and we had a big jump in 2007, we had a good year with sales tax and mortgage tax. We had a lot of sales tax and mortgage tax that year. But it started to have a constant decline over the last couple of years, and there hasn't been much growth. Um, so again, without thinking of other revenue sources and expenses going up, we have to consider what can we do to keep the taxes down. Um, this shows you what I consider the actual, like an income statement in a, in a little, um, little graph here. The red lines are the deficits, the green lines are surpluses. As you can see in 2009 was that big year we have with the health insurance loss. So it was over a million dollars. So that's why you see that big difference between the two. But the good part is we had enough fund balance to cover that loss and not have an overall deficit in the budget. We had a deficit just for that specific year, but not a deficit overall. But we've had a couple, as you can see, we're very, very close. We've had, we had small deficits in a couple years. If you read the Moody's report, it actually talks about a lot a little bit. That I have, that I have some concerns, we have to look at that. But our fund balance is strong. That's the good part. But we have to talk about how we're gonna keep those lines closer together without having the red going above it. Last year, we had $80,000 surplus. $17 million, $80,000 is, is good, but it's very close. Uh, this, I like this pie, again, just to show in percentage, as a taxpayer, where your tax, tax money goes to in percentage-wise. Of course, the, the Dobbsbury School District is the highest part, shows you the county, the village, and the library. I like to show the library, too, because when you pay your village tax, you're also paying the library tax. So. That it's a small percentage, but it is calculated as part of the overall budget. And I try to do it on the average house at $16,000, which is about a half million dollar value at this point. So if your house is a value of about a half million dollars, this is how your tax share goes to. So for the village taxes, I like, I'm proud to say, you pay $3,600 for all the services, police, fire, highway, snow removal. That's what you pay in village tax. And I think, I think I'm, 
I got to give kudos to my department heads. They do a very good job to keep expenses down. And for that amount of money, I, got, I, should be very, well, I think we all should be very proud to provide that service for that amount of money. The fund balance, let's talk about fund balance a little bit. Um, we had a big year back in 2008. And even though we had that big, sur sur that big deficit for the health insurance, there was a mo there were modification in the fund balance calculation because when fund balance, if you remember when we did the audit report, there's a couple of numbers to make up the fund balance. It's not just the unappropriate, it's a couple of other numbers. So it depends how the year goes on those other adjustments, how your fund balance go. So even though we had a deficit in that year, we actually, our fund balance went up a little bit because of adjusting entries had to be done during the year. Yes? One question, Marcus, does the state limit fund balance? Well, they this do for I'll, schools, yes. I didn't know whether they do it for villages. Yep, I'll get into that too. I got Thank another you. another another one that shows that. Um, so talk about fund balance, but this shows you another chart by percentage of fund balance. Uh, the state doesn't limit it. Um, actually, Moody's and Standard Poor's are rating agencies like to see a policy. If you read the Moody's report that we received a couple years ago with the Budget Committee and we Vic, we created a, but, a, a, a fund balance policy. The fund balance policy is between 10 to 15 percent. If we go above, above the 10 or 15 percent, we can use that revenue to pay for one-time expenses, not for operating expenses. So you can see we're right at the cusp of where we should be. That's why if you read the Moody's report, they were very happy that we had a fund balance policy and we're abiding by the fund, ba fund yeah. balance policy. Yeah, yeah so I'd say just to, just, mm -hmm. um, and, and Vic knows a lot about this, we worked on a lot of it. Uh, it sort of self-adjusts, right? Mm -hmm. So it, you know, if, you, if you have 15% or higher, um, you, know, you can actually give that back a little bit yes. or, or apply it to something else, um, whether it's in the long-term capital or, or right. debt or like you said, one-time payments underneath and it has to be sort of refreshed again. Mm -hmm. So it, it's self, sort of self, uh, it's not state mandated, but we sort of mandating ourselves a little bit. All right, and, and, and Moody's, that's why we're one of the few municipalities in the state that have a fund balance policy, and Moody's gave us a lot, a lot of benefit and extra points for having that fund balance policy, and that we're following, but some of us have a fund balance policy, but don't follow don't it. Follow it right. We're following it, and we've been following since we adopted it. So that's a, a good avenue for us also. Um, so in summary, just to uh, give everybody a summary, we're looking at a 2.91% increase, which is a $6.81 uh, tax rate increase per thousand. That equates to a $108.94 increase in taxes, uh, or $9.08 per month. Um, any mistakes, it should be fifteen sixteen. so I have to make that correction. Um, so the tax cap for this year that I explained was 1.0168. That's our tax cap. Our growth factor was 1.0048. You combine those two together, that helps us uh, to meet the tax cap, and as well, we had a $30,000 carryover. Um, the taxable value decrease for this year was another $246,000, which is about 0.48% uh, decrease. That equates to almost $58,000 almost $58, in lost revenue. That's how much we lost by losing the $200,000. So for every dollar we lose in taxes, it actually equals a dollar amount. That's what it equals to. Um, the total expense <coughs> increase was only, a, I don't say only, but a 1.71% increase. With all the struggles we have and everything that's going on, I think that's a reasonable amount of increase. Um, we had two years of deficits, which is something we have to consider in the future. And the future concerns, like I said in the past, is recurring expenses. Uh, with no reductions in other, uh, other avenues, uh, no, no additional recurring revenues that we have to look at very closely. And we have a transfer from debt service right now, you've seen the budget of $300,000. That's one of the things the orders have stated that we actually had money left over in, in debt service for projects or debt that we have retired that we can actually bring back to the general fund. I have $300,000 in there. That ends at about two years. Then there's no more money left. So that's $300,000 loss in revenue that we have to try to make up within the next two years. Or that could, be, that could equate to a 25 to a 2.8% increase just to cover that loss of revenue. Okay, and then the appropriate fund balance, just to make sure that we try to reduce that a little bit and not to have a big loss in the future. So that's my, that's my little report. And uh, hopefully I, I've answered any questions. And I'm always available, email, phone, by phone. Everybody needs to reach me. And um, I look forward to having the workshop on Thursday. Thank Somebody's you. Somebody's calling now. Great. Uh, Mar Marcus, thanks for that. Just a couple quick comments, I think. Great presentation, as usual. Thank you very much. 
Um, we're bottom line. We're going to be under the, the tax cap as it's going to be calculated this year. But it was a, you know, it was another another big challenge. I think obviously some of the things that really stand out and of concern are, you know, the taxable uh, valuation decrease, which, while there has been some redevelopment and projects have been approved, I think part of the story here is that it takes a long time to review those projects, and it takes a long time for them to get built, and until the permits are actually being uh, being uh, presented, for. applied for, uh, there isn't any money coming in. That's right. So, you know, there's a real um, lag, lead lag time on that. So when you had a situation which we had when we first come in, and or there's been a situation where there just hasn't been any sort of redevelopment going on for many, 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 many years, you really dig yourself into a deep, deep hole, and it, it just gets harder and harder to dig yourself out. So, you know, we would hope that that trend is going to Going to, going to um, well, as evidenced by the tax search this year, yes. right? Those go back eight, nine, ten years. That's right. Predate every, predate all of us. Mm -hmm. But that was during a period where things just weren't getting done. Correct. And uh, and then the economy went bad, and uh, so, you know, that's I think a lesson there. But you know, that's we have to deal with that. You got to deal with it. But that's that's a real issue. Personnel costs going up, obviously a big big concern. Mm -hmm. It's like you're on a treadmill, right? right? Going up, and you just you don't seem to ever, mm -hmm. well, you know. The chief does everything that she can do, and Gary does everything, and Matt. That you know, you know, you've got healthcare costs are still going up. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's some new laws now, regulations that are affecting, you know, affecting the uh, the the costs and increasing them. So it's getting you know really harder and harder. And I think you said here that we've done everything we can to sort of reduce. Uh, it's amazing what they've done, but. It's almost like it's not enough, right? right? Mm -hmm. And yet you start, you've cut the fat, but now you start getting into cutting muscle when you, you know, you start going even further. So that's kind of, kind of where we are. That's correct. Um, but I do think it's possible we will see some increase in revenues. I mean, some of these projects, we, we should start to see some permits, but there's only so much you can do. We can't take chances. We can't take risks. We can't say, oh, we think this is going to come right. in. Right. Or that, you know, you got to, mm -hmm. until you really have the money in the bank, exactly. you, you can't apply it. So right. um, we still have to wait for that. Um, fund balance you mentioned is a good. I mean, we have had to use the fund balance, and it's in it's in good shape, but it's not at a point where we have excess fund balance that we can throw at this thing. Correct. Right. So there's no miracles here, and um, so anyway, those are just some comments. But mm -hmm. it's a great presentation. There's a lot of detail, and over the next couple of weeks, we're going to get into the, some of that detail and those specific lines yes. and to see, you know. You know, challenge you, challenge staff a little bit more. Is is there more? Because we're going to look for more mm -hmm. uh, if we can. So, mm -hmm. okay. Bill. Yeah, no, Mayor. Um, just to pile on to your point, Mayor Marcus. If I go back and look at where we were in our highest assessed value in 2011, over 53 million, mm -hmm. down to 51 million, about. Mm -hmm. Not only do we have to give tax certs, but we've lost about a half a million dollars plus a half million dollars of of revenue. taxes, of revenue. Correct. So again, Mayor, like you're saying, without development, without, I mean, that's the added challenge. So not only do we have big tax certs, but on a forward basis, we're taking in a half a million dollars less than we were yes. four or five years ago. That's correct. And the expenses are going and up. the expenses so, are going yeah. up. Yeah. So, uh, but besides that, it's all smooth sailing. There you go. <laughs> right. Been facing this for a long time, yes. Any other questions or comments from the board at all at this point? Uh, um, any, yeah. Um, Bob, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, Bob McLaughlin, who chairs our uh, ad hoc budget committee, uh, and we'll take any comments for anybody else, uh, residents here as well, or any questions you might have at this point. Good evening, Mayor, members of the board. Marcus, another excellent presentation. Uh, not only do you put a lot of hard work into pulling this all together, but you deliver very complicated information and you simplify it uh, for the normal person, which is great. I just want to reinforce a few things. i only take a minute, Mayor, to reinforce a few things that you've said uh, and that Marcus uh, said. There is a lot of work uh, that, you know, from the Budget Committee and we work with the Mayor who's a member and Trustee Vic Golio and uh, we have some great members of that committee, Dave Oaks, Paul Stern, uh, Jim Stone, and Bruce Catania. And they've, they've put a lot of hard work into coming up with ideas, working with you folks on the budget. And we, I think we're very supportive in reviewing all this 
in great detail. And uh, I think everybody agreed that this is a very good uh, tentative budget with very minor adjustments that are needed that we'll talk about over the next few days and in the meetings you'll be holding. So, you know, we have to commend Mayor yourself. I want to mention that I don't know of any other towns that are as transparent as Dobbs Ferry. Uh, I don't know that there's any other ad hoc budget committee uh, committees out there. I don't think there are. Yeah, I, I, I don't, don't know. Are, I don't think that there are. And I think that's a testament here to Dobbs Ferry that, you know, we feel pri fairly privileged that we can come in and speak our minds and you actually put up with us sometimes because we're not, uh, we can be a little rough at times, right, Vic? Um, but I think it's, it's for the betterment of the village and it gives everybody a voice. And the transparency goes beyond that. I don't know of any, you know, many villages that'll go through a presentation like this uh, for the residents of the community. So, you know, that's uh, really important, I think, that you are willing to take our input, so we thank you for that. It, there's another issue, I mean, this budget looks pretty good this year, and I know, Mayor, you've said, and Marcus, we're really looking at 16, we've already started looking at on the Budget Committee, uh, 2016. 17. And I mean, the last six years, uh, you've basically hit a grand slam. I, I think everybody in the village, uh, anybody paying taxes has to be happy when you look at the chart of how the tax rate has been kept down here over the last, I don't think there's any other village that comes close to Dobbs Ferry. So I have to commend uh, our managers too, that have made every effort uh, Chief Betsy, Chief Jerry, we have uh, Gary from the DPW and Matt from Recreation and others that aren't here tonight that really do a great job and have the best interests of the village at heart. So uh, they do a terrific job. There's only a few ways, and, and Mary, you mentioned this, that we can conquer some of these things as we go forward into the future years. We can continue to cut expenses or we can raise revenue. Uh, we don't feel from the budget committee that we can cut any more staffing or, you know, we can do some fine tuning with expenses and continue to look at that, which we will. But staff wise, I think we've done what needs to be done there. Revenue wise, I think the board has been um, prudent in looking at appropriate development and getting revenue, which we will get revenue over the next few years with some of the development that's coming through. And uh, that will help us out somewhat. But there's still other things that we'll need to do, and I want to make you aware of that. So uh, another great job. I guess this will be for the future year's budget. We had six years. This will be the seventh year. So congratulations. Job well done. Thanks, Thanks Bob. And thanks, thanks to you Bob. and your committee and all the work that you do. I think you're, uh, you know, it's, um, I think you know, there aren't any other uh, ad hoc citizen budget committees that do the work, and most boards sort of don't want to have that kind of exposure. Um, but we've embraced it. Um, prior administration embraced it. I think it's gotten even better, and so it's been a really good thing for Dobbs Ferry. It's served Dobbs Ferry really, really well. And thanks for all your work, and we have a little bit more work to do. And again, Marcus, thank you. Know, thank you. Thank you, and uh, Jeff, you're new here, but you know, expectations are high for you to contribute to this process and make it better and, and look for ways for us to uh, really serve the taxpayers in this very important area. So uh, look forward to seeing any of you that can make it on Thursday. Again, it's a public workshop. We're going to really be talking to the staff and more to you and going through some lines and not really taking too much comment, but I think we can play with that a little bit. But uh, we'll have another public hearing certainly before we adopt the budget and we'll be putting a lot out about that. So thank you very much. Um, Okay, so we'll move on to matters requiring action. You want to adjourn, uh, I'm sorry, you want to adjourn the, meeting, adjourn the public hearing? Oh, I need to do that, right. So uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn the public hearing on the tentative budget for 2015-16. Trustee O'Donnell, second Trustee Flynn, uh, all in favor. And that passes with seven eyes. Uh, getting to matters requiring action, I do need a motion to uh, amend the uh, agenda just slightly here. Uh, first, in regards to action item one, number one, I need to amend that to also add 
the appointment of Barry Sherman to the Youth Service Council for a term of three years. So can I have a motion? Uh, Trustee K. Uh, second, Trustee Golio. All in favor? Passed with seven ayes. And also to add to action item number 13 is the appointment of Stephen Hunter uh, as new chair of the planning board. Um, need a motion for that. Trustee Cassell. Uh, second, Trustee O'Donnell. All in favor? Okay, and we'll add that as uh, action item number 13, just as a formality. Um, okay, moving to uh, actions requiring, matters requiring action. Number one is to consider a motion to appoint Mr. Kevin Farrington and Mr. Barry Sherman to the Youth Service Council for a term of three years as recommended by the nominating committee. Is there a motion? Trustee, yes, Trustee Rosillo. I knew that. Come on. <laughs> Second, Trustee O'Donnell. Um, Discussion. Uh, anything to add? You, we can always use new blood, so yes. they're so welcome. There you got so it. yes. You got two new, really, really good people there. Yes. Yeah. So um, thanks, and thanks, uh, Vinny, for all the work you're doing uh, uh, on the Youth Service Council. All in favor? Great. That passes with seven eyes, and we want to thank uh, Kevin, who we all know very, very well, and his family, uh, great Dobbsbury family, and Barry for uh, willing to give their time to the Youth Service Council. Really, uh, thank you very much, and we know you're going to get a lot out of it. Action item number two is to consider a motion to appoint uh, Mrs. Ann Zink as, to the traffic committee. This will be for a term of one year as recommended by the nominating committee. Is there a motion? Trustee Cassell, second. Trustee Flynn, discussion. All in favor? That passes with seven eyes. And we want to thank, uh, thank Ann for, uh, for getting onto the traffic committee and, and, and uh, serving. That's great. Action item number three is to consider a motion to award the bid for the Team Camp Coach Bus uh, bids to the lowest bidder, in this case, Enchanted Coach of Eastchester, New York, for an amount of $11,700 as recommended by the Recreation Superintendent, Matt Arone. I know Matt's here tonight. Matt, do you need to, uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions on that, or you need to, this is pretty straightforward, do this each year. Um, can I have a, uh, is there a motion? Uh, Trustee Golio, second Trustee Flynn. Yes, uh, discussion. All in favor? That passes unanimously. Uh, thanks, Matt. Um, action item number four is to consider a motion adopting the final assessment ro ro role as prepared by the village assessor for 2015 with a taxable value of $51,189,187. Is there a motion? Trustee Golio. Um, second, Trustee Flynn. Uh, discussion just we do this each year this is part of the process we really don't have any give on this that the work has been done right. the tax assessors done the work and you know we'd like that to magically go up a million dollars overnight and yeah, we'll have you get, take another look at it <laughs> yeah, that's not right. gonna happen, is it? no okay. we're lucky it's not going down any further right <laughs> okay so there it is um, all in favor and that passed with seven eyes Action item number five is to consider a motion to retain the services of the Fiona Company to provide professional services to complete the second phase of the state-mandated tax freeze in an amount not to exceed $600. I think we might need a little background sure. on this one, uh, Marcus. Thanks. Absolutely. Uh, we actually approved phase one. Uh, this is something we've done with the VOC, the all the six villages of the town of Greenberg. Um, part of the uh, mandate of the uh, tax freeze is also you have to provide them with a report showing how you will save 1% of the tax levy over a three-year term in order also to give the, the rebate check to individuals. So Fiona and uh, Mike Ritchie as a team has been meeting with all the department heads from all the six villages, taking, making a list of everything we share, uh, everything we have shared, everything we're doing with each other to show the state that everything we've been doing for the last 20 years now we, that what we've been doing in order to show the state that we've saved, um, I think for us it would be $120,000. We've probably saved a lot more than $120,000 by sharing with all the municipalities. And we can show that just by the paving that we're doing together. Um, so um, they should supply the report to the state to meet the mandate so everybody can get their checks. So the 600 is our amount yes, of the, our amount. Yep. the whole thing? Mm -hmm. um, it says you have to comply with the New York State property tax gap for 15-16, which is this coming fiscal year, Correct. and then for 16-17, which Correct. is Next you know, year. in the future. Yeah, you have to supply with a report uh, for this fiscal year by June 1st. 
has to be accepted by the budget by the uh, office of the budget of the state of New York mm -hmm. by June 1st. So they have to supply the report by June 1st to the state. If they accept it, so if we do our bills in June, okay, they'll get a, they'll get our tax levy report of the state. They'll meet we'll meet the requirement of not going over the tax cap, but we'll have the budget adopted. Uh, we didn't adopt the resolution overriding the tax cap, and we're submitted. We didn't. We have not. By then, we'll adopt the budget. So we right. have going over the tax cap. We have not adopted the resolution to override the tax cap. That's a requirement. And we meet the mandated report that we have to do, then the checks will be give, sent out to all the residents in August or September. Okay, well, then let me ask this question because it's relevant. Is that, are, we, as, are we that confident that we do not want to override? Because there's been a very clear strategy on this over the past couple of years. Correct. Even though we've come under, Correct. the strategy and plan has been the risks if you make a mistake. Correct. Um, and because it was sort of a... Mm -hmm. You know, oh, no. new to everybody, right. um, that it, it could be very, it could be easy that you could make a mistake, Correct. and then they come back and say, no, your rate was really this, and now we're going to penalize you. Correct. Correct. But we're 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 saying that we've moved beyond that point. I uh, I'm at a point I'm confident enough to uh, to to make sure our residents get the check they're supposed to get. <laughs> then I'm I'm confident enough that I've dotted every T, I crossed every T, <laughs> dotted every I to make sure we we haven't done it. I've, the state reviews my report. I actually have to submit a, state, a report to the state every year, too. And every year, I've been right on the penny. So I'm confident enough to do that. I wish that we can overwrite it anyway, but just by passing the resolution, you won't, the residents won't get a check. So Right. No, I understand that. That's the, that's the requirement. Yes. Um, and, and nothing that you did beforehand, right. nothing we did in 12, 13, 13, 14, 14, 15, mm -hmm. that hasn't counted yet, really, that's or has right. it? For the capital, for the for the three hundred dollar. I mean, the, the record of the village. Yes, yes. Does, they, does they that go, count? You go back two years. So okay. part, of, part of the re review here is what we've done two years, and also those two year savings will continue on for the next two years. Mm -hmm. Okay. A, a, a lot of mandates. So. <laughs> yeah. I have a question about the cost. It says on the proposal here that it will be for twenty one hundred or three hundred per village. Plus an additional fee of two hundred per municipality. That's five hundred, and we just put six hundred to be safe. Yeah, plus well, the out of pocket. Thank you. Expenses. The out of pocket. Just so to give a, a little cushion, yes. Now to come back for to you for fifty dollars. But that's the cap. Yes, right. it's going to be cap. capped. Right. Okay. Yes. Not to exceed. Well, you read my mind. Okay, great. Um, I read it. <laughs> Marcus, thanks. Thanks for that. And um, any other questions about this at all? And. Uh, if we certainly know Fiona, we know the Fiona company well. She's done good work for the village. Yeah. And she's doing uh, all the six villages. Yeah, so that's mm -hmm. that's good. Okay, then I'll take a motion to uh, retain the services of the Fiona company. Uh, this will be to provide professional services to complete the second phase for the state-mandated tax freeze. And this will be for an amount uh, which will not exceed uh, $600 as outlined by the village administrator. Is there a motion? Trustee Kay, second Trustee uh, Cassell. Discussion? All in favor? That passes with seven eyes. Thanks, Marcus. Action item number six is to consider a motion to authorize the village administrator to sign the 2015-16 snow and ice agreement with the State of New York Department of Transportation. Transportation, this will be in the amount of $9,525.60. So just, we do this every year. Um, this is a reimbursement. This is money that no, we're not spending like we usually are. We're actually getting money back. Yeah, yeah. For, for, there's a reimbursement for DPW doing snow plowing on Broadway. Okay. Any questions about this? Just one question. Did he also reimburse us for uh, pothole repair, Marcus? On no, we don't do pothole repair on Broadway. That's their responsibility. We don't they touch do. it for liability. We touch it really? and we own it. We don't touch it. Because it seems like Broadway is the worst. Oh, Broadway's pretty bad. Yeah. It's so it's not good. See? Yeah, too bad, Gary. You weren't on Broadway there. <laughs> he he wants to do it. <laughs> yeah, there's that one square outside the diner that just keeps really being awful. Any other questions? Okay, thanks, Marcus. And I'll take a motion to authorize the village administrator to sign the snow and ice agreement as outlined by the village administrator and as recommended by the village administrator and the uh, department, uh, head of Department of uh, Public Works. Trustee Golio, second Trustee uh, O'Donnell. Discussion? All in favor? That passes with seven eyes. Can I sneak a quick question into Gary? 
Sure. You got any feedback on that pothole killer thing? Um, oh, we got to go to the mic. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm doing this out of order. I should have done it at the end, I think. But nice job. potholes. No. You're out of order. No. So, no. Uh, <laughs> fire me. But the newbies, we, we expect this, so it, it actually, you get a few passes. No, it actually worked good. The only thing is they owe us, I believe, six hours. Yes. As soon as he gets straightened out, and, and I guess they got kind of tied up. So, I mean, it does the job. It, it's nice during the winter when, when you can't get any hot material and it stays in there. It seems to work. Okay, great. It, it works good. Good. Okay, great. Uh, action item number seven is to consider a motion to authorize the placement of Ardsley School budget signs at certain locations throughout the village. Um, this is something we also do each year this, this time of the year. We do have residents of Dobbs Ferry that do attend the Ardsley yeah. School District, and they're very specific where they do place the signs or a number of the signs, obviously generally in the eastern section of the village over yeah. towards the Ardsley border on uh, Southfield and Pearl and Northfield, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, we've always been fine with this and definitely want to help support them on that. So I'll take a motion to, uh, to approve the request uh, to, uh, from the Ardsley School <coughs> District to place uh, RG school budget signs at certain locations throughout the village as represented in the letter. Is there a motion? Trustee uh, Kay, second Trustee O'Donnell. Discussion? All in favor? Great, that passes with seven eyes. Uh, action item number eight is to consider a motion to retain the professional services of Han Engineering for construction inspection services for the Rivertown Square project as per their proposal dated April 7, 2015. The next couple of items will yes. also be related to this. We do have a letter from James Hahn, and essentially this is uh, co you know, consulting services that the village is expected to, to pay, which will be paid out of permit fees That's that will correct. be paid by the developer uh, as part of this, um, the review that the construction is going properly, and this will apply not only to construction but engineering. Um, also, as we get into the landscaping inspections Correct. and the water runoff and the drainage and Correct. all the other things that were terms of conditions of approval. Right. And the one, so, that's, yeah, the one that's missing in Phil Greeley is going to give me a proposal, too, for the traffic. So the, that's the one that's missing right now. Okay. The one, the one comment yes. and the one problem I have with this is that, and Han especially, um, a, it's a bigger number, but I expect there's a lot of construction to do, but they really give quite a wide range, mm -hmm. uh, thirty-six dollars to $84,000, and we're just kind of, kind of going through the budget discussions now. Um, that's a lot of money, and I know there's a lot of work to be done, but uh, I'd like to hear what other trustees feel about it. And I'm not trying to kill this, but I'm just saying, is there any way that we can, because the other ones I think are, I'm not saying they're capped, but this one doesn't seem to have a cap. And let, me, and let me explain that to you a little bit because this is more an overview of the whole engineering and the entire project. And I try to button them down a little bit more on that one. The, uh, the response that I'm be more than happy to have them come to the next meeting was that it's all it's contingent on when the applicant or the developer provides them with the proper documentation. Um, perfect example, no disrespect, but we're having a, a, a substantial issue with the fish repair and boat dock, for example. Uh, it's the same issue. Um, plans come in that might be wrong. Uh, they might be missing information, you have to review it more. You, they tell you come for an inspection and you're not ready for an inspection. So that's why he's basing it on an hourly basis per se. And, and it comes out of the fees we collect for the building permit fees, but the issue is with him is I can't give you a number, but I don't know how the applicant will provide me the information and be, if they'll be ready for me when they tell me they'll be ready for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, all I can say working with George Palmer over these years is he, he's on top of everything. Um, he's not anywhere, what I like about him, he's not there to make any additional money. He's very, 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 he looks at his expenditure very, very tightly. And, but the issue is we, it's a big project and we don't know if the applicant, if the applicant does everything he's supposed to on a timely basis, we'll be at the low number. Uh, I mean, but like I said, if you have a concern, we can hold it off, have him come to the next meeting, and then talk to the whole board about it and see, how, and see if you feel more comfortable at that point. I have a question. If he's, if you're doing it by time, what's the incentive then for the developer to do it in a timely fashion? 
Do you know what I'm well, saying? Because the developer's paying. No, he's well, not really. he's not yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're paying the in permits. permits. No matter what. Right. right. We can, We're collecting the money, but it's still the developer's money. Right, but That's if we didn't spend all that, we could keep it. Exactly. That's true. Right. Yes, well, that was my point. I was in yeah, terms so of capping it and right. trying to keep exactly. it as low No, no, as I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, I'm agreeing well, with you. The, 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 what will happen to the developer is his project gets delayed. So if the inspections aren't done on a timely basis, okay. it, then he doesn't, I mean, you know, you, open, you can't open a building until you pass all the inspections. No, 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 I just wanted to, that's right. I, thank you. Mm -hmm, no problem. Are Ed and Brian involved in any of this? Yeah, they reviewed the building permit, the building permit, they're not reviewing the engineering. This is all the engineering that has to take place as part of the project. And like I say, you can ask, have George, I can have George here at the next meeting, and um, Mr. Hahn, and, and answer any questions you may have. Do these need to, any of these need to be approved tonight, or would they be slowing down the project? Um, I'll have, have that point. Uh, May 4th. They, they, already, they already started some of the inspections as they stand right Hahn now. Hahn has. Yes. Yeah, spoke with the project, as you saw, we had it in a meeting today. Right. They're doing a lot of the, the slope work and the engineering work already has begun. Um, if, and right now we're paying them on an hourly basis. Um, I can tell them to stop work. I mean, stop working to the next meeting in two weeks, but then I can tell the developer there will be no inspection from this point forward. Yeah, no, I, I don't think that's where we're going. Can we look at this in six months, so after the six months of billing? Because this is for 12 months. Oh, yeah. Period. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can do it every three months, every quarter if you want to. I can, how, I can how about we make as part of the resolution that the village treasury department, the, the village treasurer, yeah. will provide to the Board of Trustees a, a report. detailed report sure. on a monthly basis. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think that's too frequent, a monthly basis, because there's a lot of work that's going to be done here going yeah, on. That's fine. Uh, with uh, permit uh, you know, ex expenditures mm -hmm. and as well as what's coming mm -hmm. in. So we mm -hmm. see really what net. Sure. Obviously, we want to try to keep as much of this as possible because right. that helps taxpayers, mm -hmm. right? Right. We know we do have to spend some right. of it to do the work properly right. and make sure mm -hmm. it's done. So sure, no is Feel like it seem, and that means that we'll be That's able it. to review it and look at it and Absolutely. ask questions as we go along. Yeah, it really is a huge range. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a four thousand yeah. dollar range with a minimum of three. I mean, it's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, great. Thanks, Marcus. Nope. Um, I think you know we do want this to. We want everything to move on a timely basis, and we want to. Um, we want to definitely see that happen. So, okay, Absolutely. let's start with number one then. That we're action item number eight which is the first in the series here related, consider a motion to retain the professional services of Han Engineering for construction inspection services for Rivertown Square project. So this, the motion actually will be to retain the professional services of Han Engineering uh, for the construction inspection services for the Rivertown Square project as per their proposal, which we have before us and outlined and recommended by the village administrator. Um, and adding to the resolution that the Village uh, Treasury Department will provide to the Board of Trustees a detailed report monthly at the end of each month um, um, detailing the uh, permit fees that have been collected and the expenditures that have been paid to the consultants. Sure. Okay? <coughs> Does my, that sound good? My question is if, I mean, this contract is for a year, I, and I'm not seeing an out. Do we want to change it from a year to six months? And so we get our monthly reports for six months and see that, okay, fine, that's going to make economic uh, I, sense. I have a suggestion. If you want to add that, this it can be terminated at 30 days prior notice if you want to do it that way. Yeah, but then we've got to find somebody else to do it. So, Okay. Either yeah, way. That would be my concern, but I, do we want to do it Either way, we're going to have year? to find somebody else to do it if that happens, right? Yes. That's true. Yes. So if you do... Six months at the end of six months, you're going to have to then either renew or find somebody else. Mm -hmm. So maybe just putting that in, subject to um, you know a review at six review. months, uh, a thirty day review at the end of six months. Um, okay. Sure. I mean that that gives us yeah. So if I, I we don't expect that to happen. Yeah, that's fine. Right. But yeah, that's fine. and Han has a very good record, so we wouldn't expect it, but right. just to add into the resolution Absolutely. that the, uh, the contract agreement will include that after six months there'll be a 30-day review period yep, no until the work's completed. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. So hopefully Liz will get all that <laughs> yeah, together work on that. in the right way, but I think that works. Is there a motion? Uh, Trustee Golio, second Trustee O'Donnell, discussion, all in favor? Okay, that passed with seven eyes. Great. Um, action item number nine is to consider a motion to retain the professional services of Munns Associates for landscaping inspections services for the Rivertown Square project in an amount not to exceed $20,000. And 
I think that needs to be pretty specific. They have uh, really put a cap on, on this. Yes. Um, they do uh, a lot of description of what the work that will be involved. Again, a lot of this has uh, been covered in great detail in terms of the review process, the approval process. But this essentially, uh, this specifically relates to the landscaping architectural within the, uh, the, the redeveloped uh, property, um, the scope of their services, um, the site inspection and reports that they'll be doing, the review of drawings, subsequent memos, meetings with village officials as it might be required. Uh, they go through their fee schedule, but again, uh, you know, they approximated at 10,000, but and now this is just for this portion. She has a second portion, um, which is for the commercial. So she has one each, one for the uh, residential development yes. and one for the commercial development, Correct. each in the amount of $10,000 or 20000 total. Right. The description of service is really the same for both. Yes. It's just different properties. Mm -hmm. um, but this really is to make sure that all the trees that are meant to be planted and and the landscaping that's meant to be done is... Right. It gets done. Right. And maybe and enhance, and maybe during the act of the project, maybe enhance some of the landscaping. So I've already had a meeting with her, so she's going to try to try to make it more enhanced than what was approved originally. Okay. Um, not as much work as required as the engineering work, Correct. but this is still very important work. And and we know Louise, um, she's Lucille. really Lucille. Lucille, sorry, she's done a really great job. She knows this project really well. She knows the property really well. She knows Dobbs Ferry really well, and she knows what the issues are. So. This one looks pretty good. I would ask, our, though, can we can we firm this up and just make it a twenty thousand dollar cap in total? Sure. Do you think and she'll be okay with that? Yes, that's fine. And then what we I, mean, do I don't know if she can come in. Mm -hmm. This this is sort of a bidding. We had a process involved here, so yeah. um, you know we could go back to her and say, can you cut your price? But I, and I think you've done that. You've worked with her oh, already. Yes. This yeah. seems pretty reasonable. Yes. Yes. Right? Okay. Um, does anybody feel, I mean, is there a term to this uh, as well? I, do we feel we need to have an opt-out clause with this one? There, no, okay. There is, man. There's a seven-day. Uh, there is already. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, Darius. All right. Then I'll take a motion to uh, retain the professional services of Moon's Associates for landscaping inspections, services for the Rivertown Square project. This will be uh, for services both for the residential development as well the commercial development, $10,000 each for a total of $20,000. Um, <coughs> Max, uh, maximum. Um, is there a motion? Trustee uh, Kay, second. Trustee Cassell, discussion. All in favor? That passes with seven eyes. Thank you. And the last one in the series is action item number 10, which is to consider motion to retain the professional services of Tim Miller Associates. This is specifically for the environmental right. services and aspects for the Rivertown Square project in an amount not to exceed $10,000. So again, a cap on this. I mean, we've spent a lot of time with Tim. Um, you know, there are obviously a lot of environmental uh, issues with this project and, you know, the, the good environmental upgrades. Yes. Uh, Storm oh, yeah. water runoff systems that will be much improved and a lot of other things that are going to be happening there to, uh, to really improve the environment from what, it, what it's been for, you know, pretty awful for so many years. But mm -hmm. anything else to add to that for uh, the... And the good part is there is con some contamination that actually will be removed and... This is part of his review also. I want to make sure everything's done according to DEC requirements. Okay. And he, again, has two components here, uh, vegetation and wetlands work and the environmental site assessment. If I add them all up, I got 4560 for each one, double that. It's just a little short of $10,000, but, you know, by a few hundred, by literally $100 or so. So um, we, we round up in that case. Yes. Uh, um, and, it, again, that seems very, very reasonable. So I'll take a motion to... Uh, any, any questions? Sorry, any questions for Marcus on this? Take a motion to retain the professional services of Tim Miller, uh, as outlined in um, in the proposal as recommended by the village administrator. And this will be for environmental services for the Rivertown Square project in an amount not to exceed ten thousand dollars in total. Is there a motion? Uh, Trustee Golio, second. Trustee Flynn, discussion. All in favor? That passes with seven eyes. Action item number eleven is to consider a motion to approve the. New Good Samaritan legislation for volunteer firefighters and ambulance workers. This essentially is if, if I guess the background here in, in simple terms is if, is if any of our uh, emergency service workers or ambulance workers call, make a respond to a call outside of our, our, our jurisdiction, out of our jurisdiction, um, and something were to happen to them that they are covered under a policy. That's correct. Which they currently are not. That's correct. Okay. Um, it sounds like a really good idea, and, and, and you know. 
people need help, people need help, you want to be able to respond, it's great our folks can respond. Um, is there anything we should be concerned about as a board on this? Any any no, significant not, costs? I mean, just to put it all into the package here in terms of what we have to be concerned about just so we know what we're dealing with? I think the issue here is that uh, we've been lucky that we've our uh, first responders, fire, ambulance, the police have reacted outside of jurisdiction to a mutual aid. We've been lucky enough not to be sued. This came up from a, actually a person suing uh, the first responder, and they saw there was a loophole that were not they were not protected under the Good Samaritan law. So um, this is supported by all the emergency services to protect them to you know save a life if they're not within the village of Dobbs Ferry, uh, which you think is common sense. But during this, this age of liability, this protects them when they're actually responding. Okay. Just have to say, this is really scary for somebody who spent five years on the ambulance corps and, you know, doing mutual aid calls to Hastings or Irvington or Artsley, mm -hmm. and now finding out that I wasn't protected, mm -hmm. uh -huh. that's scary. I really support this tremendously. Yeah, but it sounds like, a, sounds like a good idea, and we, you know, dodged one there, but uh, so um, we're going to give every... Don't want to give any reason for anyone not to respond, right? That's and so it's that important because we would expect it from somebody coming from Hastings, if it, you know, or anywhere else. You'd want, mm -hmm. you'd want the same thing. So okay, um, then I'll take a motion uh, to adopt the home rule request. Uh, wait, sorry, no, I'm jumping ahead here. I'll take a motion to approve the new Good Samaritan legislation for volunteer firefighters and ambulance workers, um, as outlined. Is there a motion, Trustee O'Donnell? Second, Trustee uh, Cassell. Discussion? All in favor? Passes with seven ayes. Thank you. Action on number 12 is to consider a resolution adopting a home rule request asking the state legislature to adopt Assembly Bill A6800, authorizing the Village of Dobbs Ferry to offer an optional 20 year retirement plan to certain police officers employed by the village. Um, so we went through this. I think we all understand what this is um, sort of a technical. Uh, just a technical error here, if you will, that right. some police officers didn't check the right boxes, but normally would have been on the retirement plan, but are off because of this technicality, but really should be on because everybody else is on, and no. that's... Uh, sorry? Nothing. I was talking to Betsy. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> did I have that right, or do I have that wrong? You, right. you have it right. Okay. Um, so I think we understand this, and, uh, you know, Mistakes can be made. <laughs> Administrative mistakes can be made. But uh, so anyway, um, so we I think we want to push ahead with this. But um, any other are there any other questions or I think we cover this pretty well. So I'll take a motion to adopt home rule request asking the state legislator to adopt Assembly Bill A A sixty eight hundred. Well, I'm sorry, we have a resolution. Yeah, there is. Um, it was got on top of your package. If you don't have it, I didn't get it. It was on top. It's it was on in your oh, okay. paper. I have the actual um, bill. But I don't have the resolution. I'm sorry. Or maybe I do. I just yes. It was on top. Take mine. Here. Here. Okay. Um, should I read this, Darius, or just the, the top part? Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, this will be uh, a resolution. Um, at the bottom. You know, adopting um, resolution adopting home rule request asking the state legislature to adopt Assembly Bill Number A6800, um, and this be it resolved the Board of Trustees does hereby adopt a home rule request asking the state legislature to adopt the Assembly Bill Number A6880, entitled An Act to Authorize the Village of Dobbs Ferry to offer an optional 20-year retirement plan to certain police officers employed by such village. There you go. Okay. Trustee Golio, second Trustee... Um, Okay, right. sure. discussion, all in favor? Okay, that passed with seven eyes. And the final one which we added at the beginning was to um, sort of formally appoint Stephen Hunter as the new chair of the uh, Village of Dobbs Ferry's planning board. Um, I talked to Steve some time ago when um, Trustee O'Donnell very nicely and appropriately uh, mentioned uh, Ed Plotkin and the work that he, and the time that he put in as a uh, member of the planning board for oh, five decades and, and shared it so well. Uh, you know, we were looking for a replacement some time ago, and I spoke with Stephen about it. And Steve's been a member of the planning board himself for, for many years, member of the land use committee, and is, uh, you know, a very, very reasonable, very reasonable person. 
a uh, very, very smart person and has seen a lot of change in Dobbs Ferry and has helped to, uh, to, uh, to allow some of that change to happen, but in, in, in a good way and was, really has been involved and he agreed to step up and be chair and I think he's gonna make a great chair uh, for the, and the work that Ed did as a leader and going forward, I think that committee is in great, great shape. So um, I'm very satisfied that Steve uh, wants to do it. I think he'll do a great job. So. Um, it's the mayor's job to sort of make these appointments, but for the statutory committees, uh, it does require a vote of the board. So I wanted to formalize this, and uh, that's what we're doing tonight. Um, so I'll take a motion to appoint Stephen Hunter as the new uh, chair of the planning board. Is there a motion? And we'll take that first from Trustee Cassell, who is the liaison to the planning board and does a, does a great job keeping us appraised of what's going on there. And the second, Trustee Kay, all in favor? That pass with seven eyes, great. And we thank Steve and wish him well as uh, chairman of that board, a very important board. They're all important, but that one especially. Um, okay, that gets us through. Um, correspondence and claims, I think first off, we want to acknowledge receipt of a letter, and we, we need to do this um, as sort of, it's a requirement from the Dobbs Ferry Volunteer Fire Department. First Assistant Chief uh, Jerry McElvain, Gerard McElvain, regarding Chief McElvain attending the New York State weekend at the National Fire Academy in Emmitsburg, Maryland. This will be from April 10th to April 12th. This is all about training and getting up to speed on the latest things that the first you want your fire chiefs to know about. So um, I know Jerry's here tonight. Jerry, you guys do a fantastic job uh, keeping us safe all the time, always on, always on call. We really appreciate it. We're really lucky in Dobbs Ferry to have an all-volunteer um, um, fire department. We have, have, have three companies. Um, and we're really, really lucky to have people that are so committed um, to put their time in, and they take it so, so very seriously. Um, do I need to say anything more, or nope, does sir. Jerry need to explain what he's doing? No, unless you'd like to, Jerry. Would you like to tell us what you're doing down there? And Jerry's the chief. Yeah, yeah he's the chief. Right. Well, but he, I, I'm the first assistant that I wrote the letter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we knew the transition was coming. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that it had actually taken place. Well, we want to. That's the class I took was Fire Chief uh, One, right. and you have to introduce yourself. And I stood up and said, I've been Fire Chief for about 40 hours. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, Well, I'm going to be the Chief Fire Chief. Yeah. Fire Chief Two, Fire Chief Three, Fire Chief Four, Fire Chief Five, Fire Chief Six, Fire Chief Seven, Fire Chief Eight, Fire Chief Nine, Fire Chief Ten, and Fire Chief you know, well, this may be, be careful what you ask for, you may get it, but you certainly deserve it. And uh, we know we're in very, very good hands with you as, uh, as, uh, as chief of the fire department, Jerry. So thanks very much for all you do. And uh, I know we'll enthusiastically uh, endorse this and approve this. And, uh, and uh, you know, again, thanks, thanks and good luck as, as, as chief. Look forward to working with you. Uh, okay, so there's the motion. We know the background. All in favor? That passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, let's go to the minutes. This will be for the regular meeting of March 24, 2015. Uh, I was not here, so I will recuse myself. Um, but I will just kind of guide through here. Are there any, anybody need to make any changes or any typos we need to correct? If not, then I'll take a motion to uh, adopt the minutes of March 24, 2015. Is there a motion? Trustee Rosillo, second. Trustee Flynn, discussion. All in favor? And that'll pass with five with six eyes, right? Only nope. five of us. Five, five eyes. Five because Me. Jeff was also out. So yeah. that'll pass with five eyes, uh, two uh, abstaining because we weren't here. And uh, that means the resolution passes, so the minutes are adopted. Okay. Um, some reports. Uh, first, yeah, any reports from uh, trustees like to... Give any reports. I'll stop down here. Jeff, anything? Want to start with me? Okay. A uh, couple of things. Uh, first off, I received an email from Frank Farrington, who's one of the co presidents of the Dobbs Ferry Historical Society, thanking you for putting in the raffle tickets uh, into the newsletter, the mayor's newsletter. Much appreciated for those of you out there. Uh, there are raffle tickets out there uh, that will help us keep. Mead House uh, going and uh, doing its upkeep. Uh, the first prize is $5,000. Uh, an event will be held on the 26th of April where Mary Donovan, the other co-president, uh, will be presenting some on the history of Dobbs Ferry uh, and the drawing will be held then. 
Uh, so that's one part of life. Uh, my other, one of my other liaisons is with the Dobbs Ferry Library, and we received word that we have received an environmental sustainability youth grant uh, from the Westchester Library uh, Board so that we will be able to run program programs in terms of uh, helping our youth uh, look at sustainability issues, uh, which is one of the things that we look at, so I think that's wonderful. And I'm forgetting the last one. Uh, go ahead and come back to me. Okay. Um, I have. Trustee Wasilla. Um, <coughs> I just have a few things here. Um, the Jobs to a Youth Service Council, based upon the research <coughs> and recommendation of Justin Kamke, Officer Kamke, the uh, Youth Service Council and the PTSA agreed to partner up and invited John Halligan to talk to students on March 25th, 2015 about anti-bullying. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Halligan had lost his son Ryan to suicide in October of 2003 at the age of 13, and it was revealed after Ryan's death that he was ridiculed and humiliated by peers at school and online. So in memory of his son, Mr. Halligan spearheaded a Vermont bullying prevention law uh, in 2004. He's also appeared on various TV shows. So on March 25th, he spoke to the 9th and 10th graders at Dobbs Ferry High School. He spoke for about an hour, and the feedback was excellent, and the Youth Service Council looks to participate in future similar events. And on June 9th, the Youth Service Council is going to host its first open mic event. They're going to partner up with uh, Mercy College, and we're inviting kids from middle school on up, including alumni, to perform songs, poetry, and comedy, and we're looking for to start this at 7 o'clock, and it'll end at 10 o'clock, and that'll be on June 9th. More details will follow. Excellent. That Thanks, Vinny. Thanks for that update. I'm, uh, I'm ready. You, remember, you got it? Okay. <laughs> we'll swing back. <laughs> Energy Task Force. Uh, we did uh, one of our community conversations on uh, climate change uh, this past Sunday, and a couple of things came out, uh, one of which is uh, community choice aggregation, which simplistically put its volume pricing for electric bills. And what it would mean is that the community, Dobbs Ferry, would aggregate all the electric bills and bid them out wow. so that you could lower, hopefully, somewhat significantly the cost hopefully also at the same time getting more environmentally responsible sources of that electricity. Uh, so we are looking to meet with the co-director. Uh, Westchester County was uh, picked by the state as the area to start this as part of uh, the New York State Rev, trying to really rev up uh, energy uh, things. Uh, so possibility maybe at our next meeting we may be able to have a presentation by him to talk about that. Uh, I believe there also is a meeting on Thursday uh, between Marcus and Nina and the EV, the electric vehicle charging station person, to continue the discussions along those lines, which I, as I understand it, we've already approved one EV charging station, and the thought was to be in the municipal parking lot. That will continue on. Uh, we are looking at uh, the New York Prize microgrid, which is another way that we can reduce costs by creating microgrids, like uh, combining Village Hall with all the uh, businesses down to Cabrini, say, as a separate unit. Again, more can be said about that potentially at the next meeting by the same uh, person, Mike Gordon. And uh, last but not least, I would really like to thank uh, Ed Manley, who uh, has been dealing with solar permitting, and we have the capabilities of receiving a $2,500 incentive from New York State for adopting solar permitting, which we're already doing. So it's kind of a no change thing, but if we do it the right way, we're gonna get 2,500 bucks and that seemed like a good thing to do and I thank Ed for following up quickly on that with uh, Leo Wegman, who's now the new executive director of Sustainable Westchester. 
that's the news. Okay. A lot of energy <laughs> news there. A lot of energy in that. A lot of energy in that yeah. delivery yeah. there too. Good yeah. stuff. Okay. Um, seniors. Seniors, Kathy. Um, the seniors went to a prom night sponsored by the Master School last Friday night. I've not seen the pictures yet, but I hear it was a blast as usual. Also, not fully you know, worked out the details yet, but the county has uh, offered to sponsor a senior exercise program for 12 weeks. So that's a nice thing and a nice feather in our cap. And beyond that, we've been contacted, the senior center has been contacted as being a possible um, uh, recipient. center recipient of the best center in Westchester. Wow. So um, we're, Abby and Perrette are working on getting them the pictures and all the information to show what we've done in the last year or so. So lots of recognition for the senior center. And I think with that uh, comes the possibility of funding or certainly increases your chances of funding when you get that that sort of recognition from the county, which will be a first Absolutely. time recognition for Absolutely. any any senior program in the in the county. Yep. Great. So, Thanks, Kathy. Good thank stuff. Um, Bill, anything down there? Yes, Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to announce that this Sunday, April nineteenth, is Community Cleanup Day, and it's going to take place from uh, twelve o'clock to one. So there's going to be four locations by age. So for uh, the first location is Memorial Park, and that's for second graders. The second location is Gould Park, and that's for third through fifth grade. And uh, the third location is the Little White Church Cemetery, and that's going to be sixth through eighth grade. And finally, the last location is uh, Dobbs Ferry Middle School, uh, high school, and then that's for ninth and twelfth graders. So if you show up, if you're in that age group, you show up at one of those four locations. Uh, if you could bring gloves and some garbage bags, that'd be great. And afterwards, all youth participants can get pizza and refreshments at the Embassy Center. So again, uh, it's from 12 to 1 and uh, afterwards at the, at the Embassy Center for pizza and refreshments. Great. Great. That's been getting bigger and bigger every year, and we're glad to see so many more kids coming out each year, uh, helping to you know clean up. It's just a couple of hours, and it really makes a difference. The school always yeah. looks great afterwards, and it's amazing how much trash and garbage you it's find amazing. around. But yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and you can get some pizza yeah. at the end of it all, so that's yeah. good. Free pizza. Uh -huh. Don, anything there? Uh, well, as it was mentioned, um, April second was Ed Plotkin's last official. Um, board meeting um, for the planning board after 50 years of service. Um, the mayor sent over a, a proclamation, which I read. Um, the planning board had a special proclamation themselves. They, uh, um, and Ed was very touched and very grateful. We also all wore bow ties. If you read, uh, <laughs> saw the Enterprise article, we, we all wore bow ties, uh, which he was very touched. And he also had quite a lot of criticism of the fact that most of us had clip-ons. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But um, it, it was very touching, and uh, you know, personally, I want to send my thanks to Ed for his terrific work and um, appreciation for everything that he's done for our village. Thank you, Donna. Uh, nice do I do High Street now? Or you want Let's to get to that in a second. Okay. Vic, you got anything at all? On uh, just quickly, you know, just touching on the budget. Um, you know, the budget committee did meet just a few weeks ago again. And as uh, Bob pointed out, you know, we're already looking ahead, you know, not only at this budget, but the upcoming years and I just want to say what a great job you know Bob has really done with the group that he mentioned and uh, you know Marcus you know you're there every meeting and of course all the department heads you guys have done a uh, a tremendous job with what we've had to work with so uh, thank you to everybody and uh, you know we'll keep up the hard work it's been a great committee great thanks Vic okay um, we do have a couple of announcements and some other things why don't we uh, swing back to the high street view shed project we've talked a lot about it Donna wanted to ask if you could give a little update because I know the Conservation Advisory Board, I know Neil's here tonight too, if you guys want to give just a real quick update where that stands and because um, we're, we're real excited about this and we're real excited about, you know, the work that the Conservation Advisory Board is taking to, you know, make sure we're doing it right. right. Um, well, as of right now, yesterday we received the report from the arborist um, who identified the trees, um, he categorized them. He um, also listed the condition of the trees and made recommendations of what should stay, what should go, et cetera. Uh, again, we just got that, so we just looked it over. It looks like a very thorough, uh, I think he did a great job. And, but tomorrow night we are having a meeting with the um, Conservation Advisory Board and the Recreation Commission to go over this report and to come up with recommendations. Hopefully we'll have 
some recommendations by the next meeting or next month, whatever. That's really great. Neil, do you have great. anything else to add? Great. Or? Neil, anything else? <laughs> okay. Thanks for sitting through this whole the whole meeting tonight, Neil. I, you know, gosh, you did not you did not have to do that, man. But um, you know, thanks for chairing that committee, and uh, it's it's important work, and I'm glad we threw this. I feel a lot better that we threw it this way too. So you, know, you had to rein me in on this one a little bit, but it's a good thing that you did that, and uh, it's. Uh, it's going to be an even better project because of it. So really look forward to the recommendations and thanks for that report, Donna. Um, real quickly here, um, update on Waterfront Park, uh, put it out in the newsletter, but tentatively we set June 13th as the rededication ceremony date and we will share a lot more information on that. Um, hopefully we're going to get some good weather from here on out, but that's really kind of we have no other time to do the rededication. Uh, that's really the date that we're going to do. So. Um, that's obviously going to be a, a very big occasion, a, a, a good, a great occasion. We're looking forward to that, so we'll get uh, more information out on that. Um, we, we are committed to having the, um, the Dobbs Ferry High School graduation uh, at Waterfront Park, on, which will be the 20th. Um, so we're, you know, I know a lot of the kids are really looking forward to going back there. That's kind of the Dobbs Ferry tradition. And I think the administration kind of like the, the Mercy College set up over there, but the kids like the Waterfront Park. In Dobbs just Ferry. Pray there's no rain. Yeah. Um, so, well, you just had to ruin the whole thing there. Jeff. Sorry. <laughs> no, we don't get, you know, on these big days, we don't get rain. We get sunshine. So, um, but we will pray. We will pray. Pray, pray like mad. Um, but I do want to add, and I think, you know, we, we put this out in the newsletter, and it's uh, that we are going to have to really basically, uh, really, uh, severely restrict any access to the park this year and it's been recommended by all the experts that you know we had a very severe winter hasn't been a great uh, spring but the grass the sod the new plantings need need time to develop their roots and to come in strong and if we uh, let just the people just kind of run on the park uh, it's all going to die it's not going to make it so um, we're going to have we're coming up with a plan we'll communicate the plan but we really were not going to be able to allow um, any 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 uh, activity on the grass or the open space areas. It will have to be limited to the pathways. Um, and of course, the, uh, the beach will still have access. Uh, so the kayaking and canoeing, and that can start. Um, but we just want to communicate that so people don't get disappointed. But that's, that's sort of the plan right now. It's absolutely the most prudent decision to make. It's in the best long-term interest of the, of the park. Um, all the investment that's being made, we want to make sure we protect that. And it's just not worth the risk. So. That's the update on the waterfront park. I think we are hoping still that the dock might be uh, pier might be done by the. Uh, I actually spoke to the. There has there been another fallback. No, on I that. spoke to the contractor today. He says he plans to be done by the end of this month, with okay. the fisher pier and the boat dock. And the boat dock. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll keep our fingers crossed. That's been probably the most problematic area that we've had on this project, and we're we're really concerned about that. But uh, if he can pull it off, great. Uh, have to you know be seen, but. Um, it would be disappointing if one or the other weren't available, you know, weren't ready by then. But we'll keep everybody posted on that. Of course, the village, we're doing everything we can to, uh, you know, there's only so much you can do to get someone to get the work done, right? So um, let's hope that happens. Uh, United Water Hydrant Testing? Uh, that, 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 that's that, continuing on. Uh, we send emails whenever that continues on. Uh, if anybody has any problems with water, they can check, contact United Water. Um, but, you know, been keeping us abreast. I'll be sending information out to the public as I receive it. Okay. Great. All right. Well, I think that brings us to the end here. I want to thank everybody for all their. Okay. Um, okay. So the American Legion flea market, annual flea market is this Sunday at the waterfront park, nine till 3 p.m. Uh, it's a great way to support the American Legion, a great cause. Um, they do this every year and, you know, um, it's getting nicer and nicer down at the waterfront, so it's really nice down there to spend some time. Um, there were some people actually that were eating outside at Hudson Social this past weekend. It was a little windy, but you can start to really get the feel down there. It's uh, going to be a really exciting place to be, and it'd be great to be down there helping to support the American Legion for their flea market uh, this Saturday or Sunday. Sunday. Um, okay, that's great. Um, again, thanks for all the input tonight. Great meeting. Got a lot done, and... Uh, I know uh, Trustee O'Donnell said some really uh, meaningful words, and Bill, we know it's been a tough time for you and your family. 
uh, losing your father, Thomas, but uh, we've, we've been praying for you, and um, we do one in recognition of your, of your father, Thomas, who passed away. I know he's a, he was a great, great man. You're going to miss him dearly. Everyone's going to miss him, and we will be closing the uh, meeting tonight in, in, in honor of Thomas Flynn. Meeting adjourned.